It's Q1, and that means new goals, more growth, and upgrading your day-to-day workflow. While most sales folks are stuck in the mud of manual scheduling, digging into data, and tracking down leads, let me share a better way to win. The new HubSpot Sales Hub is filled with easy-to-use and powerful tools that make closing deals and collaborating across departments a breeze. Sales Hub is an all-in-one platform for converting contacts into customers, accelerating sales with smarter sequences, managing deals with simple and powerful tools, and forecasting targets and smarter sales insights. Plus, you can supercharge your work with AI-powered apps like ChatSpot. ChatSpot combines the power of ChatGPT and your HubSpot smart CRM to give you a Gen AI-powered personal assistant. It's tailor-made to help you grow your business and deliver more revenue. Ask it to track down contacts, research competitors, summarize last week's sales, or draft on-message emails in seconds. Sales Hub is focused on helping you work smarter, not harder, so you can get after all those other New Year's goals. Close more deals and get on track for your best Q1 yet. Explore the new HubSpot Sales Hub and AI tools like ChatSpot at HubSpot.com slash sales. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, January 12th. I'm John Weigel here with Ben Berkeley, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're sucking up our pride and joining the conversation around this Stanley Cup fad. The Stanley Tumblr Company is in the middle of a boom with shoppers camping out in front of and stampeding targets for its 40-ounce water bottles. But how great has the impact been for Stanley and consumers alike? We'll get to that and much more, but first, let's give you the hits and headlines today across business and tech. SpaceX sent its first text messages through its Starlink satellites and T-Mobile's network. Elon Musk's company aims to offer direct-to-device texting this year, so look out for that. Next, the last Sears store standing in the New York metro area is officially closing its doors. Sears, at its peak, along with Kmart, had 3,500 stores and more than 300,000 employees. Now there are just 12 stores left. How sad I remember going to a Sears when I was young, and boy, was it a hoot. It also makes me really sad. In the last week, even, I think I've passed three shells of former Sears locations, which great properties, by the way. I feel like people are going to turn those into something really, really strong in the future. And in more going away news, Fruit Stripe Gum, introduced in 1969, is yet another once beloved brand fading from the world. Though Ferrara Candy Company will discontinue the product, we're still learning new things about it today. Its zebra mascot was apparently named Yipes this entire time. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, I honestly didn't know. I definitely bought the gum as a child because I thought the zebras looked cool. I guess maybe I didn't buy it so much as I just begged for it to be bought for me. Yes. Just a sad end of an era there. Mm -hmm. On very different levels, Fruit Strike Gum and Sears, but both still feel like a really rough chapter turn. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like if you could do a control F on both of our lives, you would (laughs) find in both just somewhere a memory of buying Fruit Stripe Gum in a Sears. And, you know, that can never happen again, unfortunately. Yeah, if you did a control F on my life, I would also be really scared to see (laughs) just like how often... I was just like begging for other candies to be purchased for me. My sweet tooth is really out of control. Next up, SAG-AFTRA announced a deal with Replica Studios to make AI clones of video game voice actors. In more tech layoff news, Google laid off hundreds of employees who worked on Google Assistant, Pixel, Fitbit, and Nest products, citing investments in the company's biggest priorities. I know we've been talking about a lot of tech layoffs at the end of 2023, early 2024. And Ben, to what you told me earlier, it just seems like tech jobs aren't exactly as comfortable as they used to be. Yeah, I mean, I think we saw hundreds at Amazon just yesterday. We're seeing hundreds at Google now. Last year was Meta's year of efficiency, which saw, I think, thousands of people gone. I feel like this used to be the pinnacle of job security, at least in this era. Mm -hmm. Just like get into a nice cozy place with a big tech company and you'll be set for life. And not so much the case anymore, yeah. which I guess is kind of everywhere now. Mm -hmm. There is no safe place. Exactly. And it seems like the bubble is really bursting with these larger tech companies, of course, just having all these employees and departments that they don't want to invest in anymore. And 
it's seeming like the end for, unfortunately, for a lot of people in the tech industry, but hoping that whoever has been laid off recently can find a new path. And finally, Just Born, makers of Peeps, is rolling out four new variants of the marshmallow treats for this Easter. Sour strawberry, blue raspberry, icy, oh my God, Rice Krispies treats, and one with the longest official name imaginable, Peeps Delight S'mores graham cracker flavored marshmallow chicks dipped in milk chocolate. Ben, I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, I can't believe that they would call a product something that long. But also, I will say I'm just moments away from professing a major sweet tooth. Peeps do not do it for me. Really? I suppose Rice Krispie Treats ones seem good. S'mores, never a bad thing. But like, boy, I guess I didn't realize. I think there are like 17 varieties of Peeps and I can't imagine wanting a single one of them, though I'm still really excited to see what's new. Yeah, I feel like people are going to come at me for this, but I, I tend to think Peeps, I put them in the same category as M&Ms, not for taste, not for flavor. I obviously am a big M&Ms guy, but in terms of the different colors don't necessarily mean different flavors. Like I, I definitely had like a green Peep before and it was just the taste of the same as a yellow Peep, which tasted the same as a pink Peep. So I didn't exactly know that they even had flavors, but it seems like they're really going big with it this year. Weird to me at all that they're not making more rabbits and they're making just the chicks, so... Interesting. Yeah, I think we definitely owe it to ourselves between now and Easter to do a little bit more diving into the business of peeps. So watch this space, but also please keep it away from this space as I gesture to my mouth because no thanks on the peeps again. Okay, everyone, for our main story of the day, we are buckling under the weight of the media and talking about the Stanley water bottles. Yes, we briefly mentioned this last week, but headlines haven't gone away about Stanley's limited edition Valentine's Day tumblers causing chaos at targets across the U.S. But Ben, what are the numbers behind this Stanley boom and what can we expect going forward from this? I mean, I've got numbers galore for you, John. Oh, fantastic. But first, I'm going to take a quick step back just to this buckling that you speak of, because fancy hydration has come up a lot around these parts. We've actually covered this topic pretty consistently in our newsletter. We've logged a few times how Stanley sales are on the rise, how companies like Hydroflask and Yeti are you know, trying to make insulation cool, and they're putting up big numbers along the way. We haven't, in spite of all that, kind of felt Like we should devote that much time and space to this because they're water bottles. Like there are bigger things in this world. Or so we thought. Like how hyped can people get on water bottles? Turns out pretty damn hyped. I guess so. And so things have really escalated. It feels like especially this week, things have started to get really absurd with all of these people storming Target stores for a water bottle, I will say it so many times over and over again. (laughs) And it just feels like we can't really roll our eyes at this fad and move along, in part because of the numbers themselves, where Stanley's annual sales do tell a wild story. We are talking about a company that's average annual sales were about $73 million in 2019, not that long ago. Let's just fast forward another two years where this bottle kind of started to pick up. They hit $194 million last year, given just like the craze around this, which is really just fueled by social media. It's kind of become this status symbol. Sure. We're talking $750 million in annual sales. So that's um that's pretty that's pretty far from just 2019 73 million. And I think it's rare you get that stark of a story really driven by this one product. And we can say it just one more time. It is a water bottle. Yes. And that is happening. And I think it kind of doesn't even compute that like it is happening to this degree over this thing. And that we are at the point where every media property feels like it needs to lean in hard as we are actively doing right now to this story. It's just gotten that big. It has gotten absolutely huge. And I mean, the bottles themselves are 40 ounces, very large. And kind of as you alluded to earlier, this is a lot in part due to social media. 
the area of hydration has gotten surprisingly big on TikTok, as has the area for collectibles of these things and the different colors and all the different shapes and sizes, I'm guessing. But there have just been so many people who have just been enthralled with this product and enthralled with everything around the water bottle space and have started this movement. And I'm sure a lot of that contributed to the $750 million that they raised last year. But the crazy part is we're talking about it so early in 2024 and the numbers will probably just increase this year, seeing as how everybody's getting so rabid over these things in pink and red. Yeah. And I guess the thing is, it doesn't even feel like they're trying all that hard. It feels like this is a product that initially hit because it was generally considered a good product. And then it just became ubiquitous enough that suddenly everyone had to have one, especially once you start seeing it with influencers. And I just feel like it isn't going anywhere. And then I think you also hit that critical mass where we're at right now. And you see the dark side of trends like this with resellers coming in. Absolutely. You see people trying to sell counterfeit versions. It's a public safety issue now when it comes to like Target, if they were to restock these good luck to a local police force trying to like keep control of that crowd. But I think that what's always really interesting about things like this is you could argue it's a celebration of entrepreneurship where you kind of get this moment where people see, oh, there's something here and then they're trying to make their buck on it. Like I did see with my own eyes just this morning, like someone putting in like an $800 plus bid on one of these bottles on eBay. Oh my God. And like... I guess good for the person who raced out and punched out enough people to get their quencher to make that profit. It's a really strange one. It's really hard to know how to feel about it. Yeah, I don't exactly know how much further they can go as well. And that kind of being one of the points of this is when something gets to be a fad like this, I would imagine it falls off pretty soon after. But as we've seen, they've been on steady increase year after year after year. So I'm just curious to see you know, will there be like a green one for St. Patrick's Day <laughs> that'll cause a similar amount of ruckus to this? Yeah, I mean, there are theoretically only so many colors, <laughs> but like, I don't know if you're gonna find a forest green versus a Kelly green making all the difference in the world in terms of demand. I guess we'll probably find out <laughs> in just a month when they start stocking whatever special edition you've just prophesized. But you would imagine there would be an end point for this. I suppose if we want to look at it, like good for the people at Stanley who are making a livelihood off of this. For sure. Good for people who are, you want to assume filling this with actual water and then drinking that water and then reaping the health benefits of being more hydrated. I guess that's great. But also I guess good for the people who are carrying empty ones around just to look like they're on top of the world. Happy for them too. Yeah, happy for all parties. And I guess we will have to stay up to date on this because it is inescapable now. It is, I would say, the only story that matters on the planet today. <laughs> if you're thinking about anything else, it doesn't matter. What matters is water bottles. Great. And we can agree on that. All right, that'll do it for us today. Thanks everyone for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We are a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email and we'll see you next week. All right, everybody, I've been listening to this podcast lately. It's fantastic. It's called DTC Pod, hosted by Ramon Barrios and Blaine Bolas. It's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, which is the audio destination for business professionals. DTC Pod is a podcast about all things direct to consumer, as it says in the title. Ramon and Blaine cover everything from starting, growing, and optimizing e-commerce stores and DTC or D2C brands. They have a lot of great conversations with founders, marketers, platforms, creators, 
and marketing and growth agencies to cover all these topics like brand building, social media, influencer marketing, website conversion, paid media, Facebook ads, consumer trends, email marketing, and much, much more, if you could even believe it. If you're interested in stories behind your favorite consumer brands, this podcast is tailor-made for you. Just the other day, I was listening to an episode and their guest was Mikey Taylor. Mikey started as a professional skateboarder and flipped his life into becoming a huge entrepreneur dealing in real estate, owning his own brewing company, and also owning a skateboard company called Sovereign Skateboards. This guy really flipped his life into something insane. And it's so cool to listen to how he did it every single step of the way. Definitely go check that episode out. It's really, really inspiring. And you can listen to DTC Pod wherever you get your podcasts.